Hello everyone out there. Welcome to the show called IoT All The Things. I'm your host Rudy Chetty. I'm a senior solutions architect and I'm joined by Frank Lee, who's a senior IoT embedded SDE from Amazon IoT. Frank, welcome to the show. Hi Rudy, how are you? I'm good, good man. I hope you're doing well too. I'm good, so, thank you. You know what Frank, um, what does your team do? In fact, what's your team's name and what do they do? Yeah, so everyone, uh, I'm coming from the NASMAO. IoT team. Okay. So uh, what NASML does is uh, in the past, uh, Amazon used to deliver the packages through the third party uh, like USPS, UPS, right? Okay. So NASML basically is the um, Amazon uh, de department which we deliver packages by ourselves. So, okay. yeah, so the IoT is part of that. Uh, NASML, we use IoT as a technology and also a pro problem solving approach yeah. to help the driver improve their efficiency, performance, and also help the customer for their customer experience. Okay, dude, that sounds fascinating. I mean, look, uh, for those of you out there, IoT stands for Internet of Things. It's all those connected devices that you have, everything from your cell phone to low powered, uh, low memory CPU microcontrollers. And it sounds like Frank's team is you know, exploring those possibilities in the package delivery space. I mean, in fact, you know what, Frank, um, you know, I had a, a, a kind of a, an interesting interaction with the delivery drivers is, um, you know, they, they actually called me because uh, they couldn't get into my apartment complex oh, yeah. uh, when I moved. And, you know, I went down and actually met with the driver and talked with him and said, wow, it'd be easy. It'd be nice if, you know, something made this easier to uh, achieve, like the delivery. So right. it sounds like your team is actually trying to, uh, you know, pilot that throughout the, uh, all these apartment complexes and residential buildings. Can you kind of, uh, you know, give us an idea? Is that the, the problem you were trying to solve? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's, I think that's a very common problem today. Uh, so, you know, the driver, when they're approaching to the multi-tenant buildings, complex, um, most of the modern buildings, they have the access control system, right? Okay. So the people uh, either use their key fob or they need to uh, key in some code mm -hmm. in order to gain the access to open the door. Okay. So, but that, that usually doesn't happen to our drivers. So uh, drivers, they usually don't have the key fob or they don't know the code, so they cannot deliver the packages to the uh, customers who, mm -hmm. who uh, live in these uh, buildings, oh, right? So they, they get stopped at the gates. Is what exactly. So sometimes you may see the packages either be uh, left out of the outside of the building, yeah. or uh, they have to, the driver have to somehow... <laughs> It's a shiny new piece of electronics. You don't want that outside. Oh, you don't want oh, that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so all driver has to call somebody, call customer, especially uh, to open the gate for call them. Call me, yeah. Yeah, or maybe call the uh, building managers to open the door, right? Uh, so that's a really headache for both customer and the driver. Mm -hmm. uh, so we uh, have been through those, those problems and we uh, did some marketing uh, research okay. to say, hey, how can we solve the problem for the customer? So you think like, what's the right approach based also on the feedback? Okay. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So and then we go to the uh, building, talk to the building managers, owners, and also to get uh, familiar and understanding their uh, access control system. Uh, then we find out, hey, maybe there is a common solution which can solve this problem. Hmm. Um, what do we need to do is first get understanding of their access control system. Okay. And then find a solution, right? Um, most of them are using the very common protocol to control their access control system. And then uh, we went to the their building, do the uh, field research. Oh, so you went on site. Yeah, we went on site and do all this. even better because you're getting all the, the data you need. Exactly. And then we find out this protocol and we find out, hey, we can use a device to solve this. Mm. And then we come back and say, hey, this is definitely an IoT problem. Ah, so you're saying it's a device, it's a thing, and you're like, we're going to connect it? IoT, IoT. There we go. All the things. Okay, so uh, then we come back and say, hey, uh, where can we find the IoT solution for this particular particular problem, yeah. problem, right? And we find out EWS IoT has a very rich device catalog, okay. which provides a list of the catalogs, mm -hmm. devices, which we can choose, and they come with the free RTOS, the RTOS, and then uh, it has the open source uh, packages, yeah. which we can download. And then uh, basically the device is uh, out of box, it works. 
with all of those functionalities. So, so you went through this, uh, it's called a partner device catalog. Exactly. And you actually searched through it, looked at devices, and you're saying you chose one based on uh, you know, it's support for, in this case, Amazon FreeRTOS. Yes. And because it's a qualified device, you know it works out of the box. That's right. Okay, okay. And, and you know, you know, for our viewers at home or our viewers um, watching, uh, do you have an example of this device? I mean, I think we've, we've got a few sitting here. I've figured one of them might be the right one. Okay, so is this is this the board itself? Yeah, I think... just hold it up so people can kind of get a, a look at it. And yeah. if you can see, we'll try and zoom in. And zoom out, okay. <laughs> so what's the name of this board? Yeah, so this board is basically uh, the PIC32. Okay. Uh, from the microchip. Yeah. It's called the Curiosity board. Oh, Curiosity, curiosity like, um, okay, yes, yes, like the rover. <laughs> yeah, right. So uh, this board has a very good feature, which yeah. it provides the, the common bus. Yeah. Uh, you can put a clickboard on top of that. Oh, can you kind of demo that quickly? Because yeah. you're saying these board. oh, I see. Yeah. So ah. as you can see, this is one clickboard which provides the um, uh, UART uh, okay. functionality, UART through USB. And then you just plug in and then you ah, get UART. So you can extend functionality yeah. uh, just on the board itself just on the board with itself. The, the pins. Yeah. And I think so the same thing for this Wi-Fi board as well. This okay. is a common so that's like a Wi-Fi board. board. Yeah. And then I think you've got an example here of one that if you didn't do that, uh, oh. you, would have, <laughs> you would have to do something like this where you're using a breadboard. Uh, colloquially known as, um, and you've got devices on it mounted with sensors, and uh, this is an OLED screen, but you can see that we have to connect cables. Not, not as elegant as the clickboard solution, but also possible if you're going to use those type of uh, devices. Yeah, I would say this is like an old school. <laughs> this is like old right? school. I remember. It's definitely my... helpful, but yeah. <laughs> my triple E days of uh, breadboards and uh, wires and resistors. Okay. Right. Uh, okay, so uh, once we find out this board, yeah. Uh, then we go out there and say, hey, what the uh, peripheral uh, board uh, we need yeah. to basically uh, achieve, to solve our problem, right, for our use case. Uh, and then we can easily add our other features yeah. on top of this demo board. Oh, so the click boards, the, the, the peripherals. Board, okay, yeah, and yeah. also we build our uh, peripheral board and connect, connect this with this board very easily. Mm, with, um, so that's how you got your UAR very nice. and you said your... The uh, Wi-Fi, the Wi-Fi, yeah, everything. And I our... mean, it's so cool because you can just plug and play as as you go along. Like I assume, if you needed to put a LAN connection, you could take out the Wi-Fi board and put a LAN. Oh yes, already yeah. there. Oh, so the, the, okay. the it, it's even it's got one built in. Yeah, <laughs> even better. Okay. 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 So then that's how you went along, and then you started building this prototype. But it sounds like you chose that also because it came with uh, you know libraries for these boards. So these little click boards. Yeah. Did you have to search for them yourself? Or? Uh, no. This those those click boards. The mm -hmm. driver actually in the uh, free RTOS uh, GitHub. Oh. So you can go there directly, download the the packages, mm -hmm. and then all of those click boards gonna uh, work out of box. Yeah. Um, the only thing you need to do is for your own uh, own uh, prefer board, mm -hmm. uh, you want to deliver your driver and then uh, basically hook up with this main board. But yeah. that that's very minimum effort you need to spend yeah. for your business. This case. Well, and, and in this case, drivers being the drivers for the hardware, not the drivers who we're trying to help on the roads. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. Okay, so got the, the, the prototype running and then, you know, you kind of... Uh, Talked a bit about how IoT seemed like it was going to solve it. I mean, should we should we jump into a demo and like yeah. show people how this works once you'd uh, you know gotten it to a production grade yeah. system? I mean, I don't know if you, you people probably been wondering what this wonderful board in the background is, but I'll I'll let Frank take you down from uh, the top here. Um, let's well, let's start with the smart fob. This is this is the actual unit, right? Right. So this is uh, this is the uh, final hardware. Yeah. Uh, we actually produced. This is the product version. Oh. Uh, inside is just the similar thing as this one. Okay. It's, so it's okay. Yeah. I like it. I mean, the form factor. Look at that. It fits in the palm of your hand. I mean, if, if you're Shaquille O'Neal, you could fit several of these. Right. <laughs> so we call this one as a K4 business smart four um, device. And in the building, yeah. uh, usually you will see is this part. Oh, so this was that existing system this is, uh, yeah. that Frank talked about earlier, where you went to these buildings and this this is the layer that you saw. That's right. Okay, correct. Okay. 
So outside, you will usually see this kind of like a K, uh, like K fob reader. Yeah. Uh, people usually use that K fob. Oh, uh, yes, these RFID cards. I, RFID card. I got yeah. one for my parking lot, for my uh, apartment complex. So. Right. If you tap it, yeah, and then you will basically open the door if you have the access. Okay. That's so, usually how it happens. So if you're authorized and you click or you put the the card here. You'll actually hear a click. Yes. Um, you know, for demo purposes, that yeah. uh, this this has been successful for uh, authentication, or authorizing that person. Right. The click basically means they are uh, is a relay. Yeah. And they are controlling the front door mm. through that relay. But is it not only the front door, right? It can be garages. Yeah, it can, it can exactly. be Side doors, side it, gates. So exactly. Your apartment complex has several. Even can be an elevator. Even even an elevator, or as we say in South Africa, a lift. <laughs> okay. Uh, so. This is what we deployed, yeah. and we're gonna show a demo which we uh, control this through the uh, oh okay through the <coughs> app through the application. app okay. Yeah. So you know what we're gonna switch over to the uh, app here. Uh, let me just bring it up for those of you at home. I won't show you Frank's password. I'll wait for him to log in. Okay, so I think okay, this so, is what it looks like. Yeah, so this app basically and is... What's, what's the name of this app? Right, this app is we call uh, Amazon Flex app. Oh, it's Amazon Flex. Okay. And so people, you know, people we can have download the, it? Yes, exactly. Okay, people so can people... download it. And uh, uh, Amazon has a, a program called yeah. Flex Driver, right? So basically, if you want to be a driver, yeah. uh, deliver the packages for Amazon, then you can sign on to this uh, uh, program. Mm -hmm. And then you can download this app and then uh, you can start Deliver that's, packages. That's so convenient. So you had an existing system of, uh, you know, flex drivers out there that had an app, and then you just said, well, let's give them the functionality because yes. they're driving for Amazon already. That's right. Okay. And so then it's one app versus like several, which already is solving even more. Right. More things. And also use your own car, and then uh, you earn money from there. Okay. Right. Okay. So this is the app. Basically, uh, I skipped a couple of uh, uh, steps. Basically, just jump to this uh, page, mm -hmm. uh, which can control this. Uh, Access so so essentially, this is the building we're going to, and let's say for you know argument's sake, we're delivering this fine package of coffee, which looks like uh, microcontrollers, uh, and you know we get to the front, we try and scan, it's like oh we don't have access. So from there, you're saying the driver looks at this screen, and they can just say unlock. I mean let's let's try and see if we can hear the audible click. Right. Well, I suppose you'll point out where it's gonna. So. Okay, so you clicked unlock. Oh, I heard the click. I hope you did at home too. Um, you can see that this LED lit up. Yeah. And I think on your, let me try one. On your smartphone, let me try one it actually showed you one of the connect. Oh, yeah. So here there is an LED light. Yes. It means this is controlling this. This port 2 is controlling this uh, uh, board, access board. Okay. Okay. So we got another uh, port, which is uh, unlocked entrance. So when I click this guy, then you will see this LED one yeah. is blinking. Okay. And that one for well for the demo purposes you've linked one sensor. So. Yeah. Okay. Right. So demo purpose I just linked one cable to and one I mean, port to this. And this this gives them like unlimited access to the building. Or what, oh, how does that work? Uh no that that basically the driver we also need the driver the yeah. driver must have a valid package ah, to enter the door. So this is the security aspect. Exactly. Okay. And also the driver cannot open this always. Yeah. We have a, a time bounded uh, uh, security in there. So only driver has a valid package yeah. and only allow them to access this in a short period of time mm, okay. for the delivery. So they can't just go there, download no. the app and say, okay, well, let me open all the buildings. No, that won't you work. Can't, you can't, <laughs> that's, that's good to know. That won't work. You, know, sure. it's, you can download the app, but you can't you know, get free reign of all the buildings out there. Right. Okay, so you do that. And you know what? I mean, we've shown you the hardware. I mean, it's it looks pretty cool to me. In fact, that the... The fob itself, you know, the building access, I'll name tags here, which, you know, <laughs> just to let you know who we are. Um, but you know what, do you want to dive into the architecture and show everyone there um, watching on the stream, like, hey, um, you know, what it's actually made up of? Yeah, of so course. So let me uh, move this little window across and I will, oops, I think that is, oh, it's clicking through. <clears throat> okay, so. That is the residential and commercial property, right? Right. So I think, you know, as we walk through, uh, you can see, okay, we've got Amazon Free RTOS and uh, the smart fob. Uh, can you kind of explain of, you know, how, why you chose Amazon Free RTOS and how it's actually working on there? Yeah, exactly. So uh, like I just mentioned about, uh, we did a lot of uh, uh, research mm -hmm. on the device side. 
Um, so basically, uh, the requ requirement is that we want an IoT device. Okay. Uh, we want this de device is able to connect to the cloud. Mm -hmm. And we want this device uh, is able to, it has the uh, very less power consumption and it has a security um, requirement. Basically, mm -hmm. satisfy all of those security requirements on both Amazon side mm -hmm. and the building side, right? Uh, and also, uh, you can support like OTA basically over the air update mm -hmm. for the firmware updates. Uh, so uh, once we lay down all of those requirements, uh, we finally decide, yeah, we should go with this, um, this board. Okay, um, and we, as we mentioned earlier, because it's exactly. Amazon Free RTOS and it's a yeah. qualified device. So, so, so that's the starting point, right? Yes, that's the starting point. Okay. So Free, free RTOS basically mm -hmm. provide all this uh, functionality that I just mentioned about. Okay. Um, and they give us an open source, right? That's that's pretty important to note that yes. so free RTOS is still open source. Um, and then that connects up into the AWS cloud, but in this case, it's the AWS IoT core, right? Right. So with the free RTOS, yeah. uh, out of box, our device is able to connect to the AWS. Mm -hmm. So especially the uh, IoT core. So the device can communicate with the uh, cloud through the MQTT. Uh, messages mm -hmm. through the um, with the secure channel. Yeah. So it has a TRS one point two security in there. Ah, so okay. So right. this is more of the security more aspects security. that you're talking about. Yeah. Exactly. But uh, for the for the people uh, watching, you know, what does MQTT stand for? Right. Oh, oh, that's the. I'll help you out there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Messaging, queuing, telemetry, transport. Exactly. <laughs> Thank it's, you, Rudy. It's a low it's a low payload protocol as opposed to HTTP. Uh, so when you're sending data across, especially in these, uh, you know, devices, you want to minimize the size of the packets that you're sending. Exactly. So MQTT, as we said, is a more lightweight uh, protocol than HTTP or some of the other ones out there. Yes. Yes. Uh, so with that, then we are basically uh, collecting the device with the cloud. Mm, I see. I see. Okay. So in this case, the AWS IoT Core. Uh, via MQTT, I think we'll we'll get to the rule uh, uh, just now. The but, rules maybe later. We'll yeah, we'll talk about that. Going there. But yeah. you know what? You know, since we've been going along, is there any questions in the chat that we might be able to answer? Let's see. Yeah, we can. Right. Yeah, if anybody wants to uh, wants to so, know more about these details, we mm -hmm. have a post uh, of those links so, on the chat. You know, with the the moderators who are helping us in the chat, the uh, they're posting yeah. uh, links. Uh, to all the, the technologies we're talking about. But if you have a specific question for uh, Frank or myself, just let us know in the chat. We'll get to you. Uh, you know, we've got the stream uh, up and running here. But as we go back to this architecture, uh, so from AWS, the AWS IoT Core, um, oh, actually, it looks like we're going to the delivery system, oh, yeah. the delivery driver. So we've got the Amazonian person who's coming there and wants to deliver your fine package here. Um, how do they get in? I think you you've explained that there's a smartphone application, right? Yeah. So basically, the like I mentioned, the the driver has the uh, Flex app running on their Amazon phone. Flex app, yes. Yeah. So uh, they log into this uh, Flex uh, app through their uh, Amazon um, email thread, uh, mm -hmm. not Amazon email, their own email. Yeah. But they log in with the Amazon, mm -hmm. and then uh, they get all of this uh, functionality from the app. Oh, and then, okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they're able to sort that page I just uh, uh, showed mm, to I open see. the door. Yeah. And you're saying login with Amazon as in uh, the protocol we allow people to utilize the Amazon credentials to log into uh, third-party sites. Is That's that right. You, okay. That's and in correct. this case, you've, you've, uh, you've put it into your smartphone application uh, so that people can reuse their credentials uh, right. to validate and authenticate they're the right person, the person they say they are, uh, they have a package for delivery. And, you know, that communication that's going up to the cloud, uh, it looks like, oh, you're going through API Gateway. Oh, yeah. Okay. So how the phone connect to the uh, cloud, mm -hmm. right? So we basically use the uh, AWS API Gateway. Mm -hmm. So it provides the secure way for the app to connect into the cloud, the oh, AWS service. So the API gateway basically provide um, um, the cloud API, mm -hmm. um, and then it will authenticate through the IAM, IAM, mm -hmm. which is the, I bet you know the IAM. <laughs> <laughs> Identity okay. and access management. Exactly. Okay, so through the IAM, then we can authenticate and authorize the, yeah. the, the user. user. Okay. Yeah, through the app. 
Uh, okay, so Amazon API Gateway, which uh, for those of you watching, uh, is the RESTful API service that we offer on the AWS platform. And <clears throat> as we go along further, uh, those calls are going into, ooh, wow, this is this is an interesting part here, AWS Lambda. Right. Mm -hmm. So how we connect um, uh, the messages mm -hmm. from the smartphone to the device. Okay. So we mentioned about the smartphone, going to talk to the API Gateway. And then through API Gateway, we route these messages to the Lambda. Okay, so AWS Lambda. Yeah. <coughs> so Lambda is basically a serverless uh, solution, right? So we don't need to build uh, uh, servers. Mm -hmm. um, we basically uh, don't need to maintain the uh, scale, scale uh, when the when your uh, traffic goes up a lot, right? So the Lambda gonna handle all those automatically for you. Okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Um. So you're saying that um, you chose a serverless um programming uh, methodology, in this case, AWS Lambda, which is offered on the AWS platform, uh, you write your um, code as functions. Yes. And then you run them uh, for the amount of time you need. You know, if you need to run 10, you run 10. If you need 1,000, you run 1,000. And you only build for the ones that you use uh, versus a more server-based approach like EC2, which is our Elastic Compute Cloud, um, akin to kind of you know, virtual machines where that's running 24-7 or it's running for an ex, you know, a duration of time. That's uh, so if you don't use that server and it's running, you still get billed for it. So you're saying here, uh, you chose the uh, serverless way because uh, you didn't want to pay for unused capacity, right? Exactly. Okay, yes. and you wrote AWS Lambda functions and you know someone goes, uh, or delivery driver goes there to the complex, clicks on a button, authenticates and authorizes via uh, API Gateway calls into Lambda, and then that goes down to the device itself, right? Yes. Ah, okay, so it goes to the AWS IoT core, and then you can see we've got an arrow that has uh, two pointy, uh, oh, sorry, wait, double arrow, that's what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Two pointy things is what I was going to actually say. <laughs> so we've got an arrow with two pointy things, and uh, it goes down to free RTOS, and that's kind of what, what we showed you right here on this board, where uh, you clicked and it went down from the top here, uh, well, actually going through API Gateway, Lambda, and then it, it yes. talked to your smart fob uh, through a, uh, Amazon Free RTOS, and then it actually activated the, the building's access control panel. I mean, that's, that's so cool. I can, for me, it, it's exciting to see uh, IoT being used in these kind of use cases. And you know what? As you're going along, I'm, I'm sure you have a need to store data, right? Correct. You, you need, okay, so you got to store data. So I'm, pr I'm, I'm guessing the next part is going to be where you're storing your data. So let's let's take a gander. Oh, okay, okay. So Amazon DynamoDB. Can you tell us more about this particular part? Yeah, sure. So um, when we de deploy those, uh, those devices on yeah. the field, right? So we must store the, uh, some configurations for those devices. <clears throat> so where do we store this? We choose uh, Amazon DynamoDB okay. because this is the uh, key key value map uh, uh, okay. databases, yeah, right? Yeah. And it handles uh, um, the information uh, with very like single digit millisecond uh, latency with very low latency. That's, that's pretty low. Very pretty low, <laughs> and also you can scale this uh, on your on your demand. Okay. Okay. So basically, you can. Uh, start with a very small or no um, uh, quantity mm -hmm. and then store in there with a very uh, small cost. Yeah. And then scale up this whenever you have your uh, amount of that demand. Yeah. So you're saying when you had, a, you know, your prototype device, uh, you can store one record and then yeah. as you ramp up you know, tens, thousands. Even uh, more than that. Even more than that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> even more than that. Uh, you can store it in this database. And, uh, you know, again, uh, Amazon DynamoDB being AWS's NoSQL offering, as Frank mentioned, key value store versus your traditional uh, relational databases. Um, you know, plethora of ones we, we offer on the AWS platform too. Uh, Aurora being one of them. Uh, we've got Postgres and so forth. Yeah. But, you know, you, you had this, this kind of schema that could change at any moment in time because you were still prototyping. And then even when you're going into the buildings, uh, if a particular building had uh, four gates and another one had five, you yeah. could still use the same structure because uh, you can add those onto each record individually, correct? Correct. Ah, okay. Yeah. So Amazon DynamoDB, uh, that shows, as you mentioned, single digit millisecond response time. 
uh, and you use something called uh, auto scaling, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, we so the enabled auto scaling feature, and we use the uh, auto backup. Oh, even so auto backup. Oh, yeah, auto okay. currently gonna backup our um, of the database yeah. uh, to a snapshot, and then we can recover later if we need. Okay, so it's uh, two features offered by DynamoDB um, auto scaling. So as Frank mentioned, you've got uh, you know small number of devices, and you know say you you deploy even more. It will scale up automatically, and uh, you know, for argument's sake, if some of those devices got decommissioned, it would scale down uh, because auto scaling is enabled. And as you mentioned, with the backup, you've got your backup going, and if there was a service disruption, you can go in and say, "Hey, I've got a you know fresh backup. Let me restore it to yeah. to that point in time." So again, you're pulling in all this redundancy and reliability into your infrastructure, um, and then you know what? It's I. I Seems like there's some gaps in the architecture, so let's see if we can fill them in. Uh, oh, well, we've got a data pipeline. Okay, going into Redshift. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so uh, what we need this is like, um, uh, you know, uh, sometimes we need to generate the business metrics. Oh, biz okay. Business analysts coming in now. Yes, yes. Yes. So there are two uh, data sources we need to analyze. Yeah. One is from the driver, one is from the device. Right. So from the driver, as you can see here, we got all the messages from the API gateway to yeah. Lambda, and then um, to we store those uh, to the DynamoDB. Mm -hmm. But how can we do some easy query and generate metrics? Yeah. And uh, you're saying you're saying with uh, in this particular case, you don't affect what's going on in your DynamoDB uh, right uh, tables. You want to rather offset it so that exactly. your business users and your let's say infrastructure or end users aren't affecting each other, yes. right? Yes, we we will not impact the the pro production. The production. production, okay. So that's yeah. that's okay. So we basically use the data pipeline to route all this uh, DynamoDB data yeah. to the Redshift. So okay. the Redshift is also provided by AWS. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, store uh, all of your data in there with the. Um, very huge amount of the quantity you can support. I think it's think uh, quoted it. as petabytes, right? Petab Petab yeah. Petabytes, okay. Yeah, and then also uh, now we jump to this IoT rules. Mm -hmm. uh, Why oh, we need okay. IoT let's, rules Let's see here. where that goes. Oh, okay. It takes us to AWS IoT Analytics. Yeah, so those IoT rules gonna route all those uh, MQTT message from the device mm -hmm. to the uh, IoT analytics and also hook up with this Redshift. Mm. So in the end, we can have a single place to generate our uh, business metrics. Yeah. To basically uh, link off the tables together mm -hmm. and then output the. Oh, I see. So you're essentially taking your, if you want to say, dynamic data versus uh, the more static data, which is in your Dynamo DB tables. Yes. And through Redshift combined with AWS IoT Analytics, you're combining them yeah. so that your business users can actually you know, have a holistic view. They can actually see everything versus being limited to, you know, if they were running queries on DynamoDB, right. uh, they'd only see that particular uh, piece of data. Um, you want to get everything in, exactly. in one go. And like you said, you're not affecting your end users. Uh, this is all being pushed further down the line through the AWS data pipeline. And as you mentioned, Redshift yeah. uh, being the data warehouse uh, solution that we offer on AWS, uh, columnar format storage, and petabytes of storage, as Frank mentioned. Uh, and then AWS IoT Analytics, where um, you can plug in other data sources. It doesn't right. have to only be your IoT devices. Oh, yeah. you know, you're pulling it from Redshift. Uh, you can pull in from uh, S3 as well. Yeah. So Simple Storage Service, which is our uh, lowest cost uh, storage solution for storing data on AWS. And you can pull them all together, um, massage the data, uh, and then actually output it into things like, you know, I mean, in this case, I, something like QuickSight, right? Uh, yeah. Amazon QuickSight for yeah. business intelligence. Or, you know, at home, if you, I say at home or where, wherever you're watching the show, um, you could use uh, something like Tableau if you're used to um, using that kind of a BI tool. So we, we give you this flexibility with the platform where you can plug and play as you want, kind of like your, your little microcontroller right. here. Yes. You find the little boards you need, plug them in. If you need to expand, you know, you get another board, which could be like another region or availability zone. And you keep going from there where you're building out... Uh, your uh, architecture and your actual application. So here, okay, so IoT analytics is the point where you uh, uh, stop. I mean, I, we could probably switch back to uh, just yourself and myself right now. Um, 
with the, the kind of pieces that you showed us, is there any kind of security best practices that you'd recommend? I know we have the IoT uh, Lens white paper, uh, which will probably be posted in the chat. Uh, that gives you some best practices. Like, uh, and I'm, I, again, you, you got to tell me what you're doing first before I uh, say some of the best practices. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so security is uh, really uh, uh, very crucial and uh, very critical in this case. Yeah. Uh, because we are basically um, giving the um, drivers access to the um, semi-public place to open the door of, uh, of the of the building, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so we basically uh, first leverage the um, uh, authentication parts through the API gateway. Okay. So as I mentioned, we use uh, IAM mm -hmm. to basically authenticate the driver. Um, and uh, the second way, the device only only the device mm -hmm. store the credentials security on that device. So basically, with the uh, PIC32, uh, we support like store those credentials yeah. in the uh, secret chip. Oh, this is on the device itself? On the device side. Okay. So people won't be able to basically um, hijack or get those credentials yeah. from the device. So it's a cryptography chip. It's cryptography chip. chip. Okay. Yeah. Cryptography, yeah, cryptography chip uh, <laughs> sitting on the, the device. And that's one of that, that also could be considered a best practice is that you're actually, you're using the security there uh, through API Gateway with IAM and, you know, from Amazon FreeRTS going up as well with the, the secure chip. Um, you know, some of the other best practices, which uh, again, are, are you doing things like certificate rotation? So, yeah, so definitely. Um, the certificate rotation basically done by the uh, API gateway as well. So mm -hmm. we periodically rotate that uh, key, uh, which we give to the driver. Ah, um, I see. So the driver won't be able to open, use this old certificate to talk to our cloud. Yeah. Right. Uh, and also, as I mentioned, the driver's uh, authentication or uh, certificate yeah. actually granted on the time bounded basis. Uh, so that's what you mentioned earlier, where they don't have like free reign to go there at right. any time of day. It's if they have a uh, legitimate delivery yeah. uh, for that uh, some you know customer in that building, uh, they'll get access. Okay, that's and right for you know a certain period of time. So as you mentioned, time bounded. Okay, and you're doing certificate rotation. Is there a particular way you're doing that on devices itself or? Yeah. So basically, um, the device mm -hmm. uh, we rotate the certificate with the IoT core. Ah. So IoT core provides the um, uh, certificate mm -hmm. um, and then we rotate it periodically and yep. then sync with the device. Okay. And uh, you know, f again, for the IoT core with certificates, uh, these are X509, so uh, industry standard, and you can use the ones provided by the AWS, AWS IoT core, or if you have an existing mechanism, you can bring your own certificates. So we give you that flexibility of, you know, if you're putting this, uh, uh, IoT core into an existing uh, architecture, you can actually reuse uh, your certificate uh, generation mechanism. Uh, so that's good. I mean, you've, you've got all these options and uh, you, you're using TLS 1.2. Uh, also with the certificates, I mean, were you doing them manually in the beginning? Uh, were you putting them on the devices, especially when you were trying out your, your POCs? You know the the manual uh, aspect of it, uh, or did you use something like uh, you know, yeah. just in time? Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. So during the POC yeah. phase, the uh, proof of concept phase. Proof of concept. Yeah. Then we basically uh, we manually first uh, deploy those um, uh, certificates yeah. to our uh, prototype mm -hmm. the device, and then uh, going the production, we basically leveraging the uh, just in time registration okay, process so uh, provided by the AWS IoT. Okay. So basically, provision your uh, certificate mm -hmm. and uh, uh, download this to the device, and then during the production line, yeah, and nobody can uh, basically uh, get that device, uh, get that certificate, and then be not be able to uh, hijack it and then do other stuff. Oh, right? okay. So no bad players. No bad players in the game. But you're saying you, you know, at manufacturing time, you put the certificates on there, and then in the background. Uh, that manufacturer sends them to the AWS IoT core. Yes. So by the time those devices that you mentioned uh, go into the hands of customers, or in this case be mounted, uh, when it makes that first connection to the AWS IoT core, it knows that certificate's valid. Right. Because it's been registered in the background. That's correct. Okay, so just-in-time registration, uh, JITR, uh, if you want a little acronym as well. Um, I think we have a, a link that we can share with you if you're 
curious to learn more about that process because again uh, you know you're going to start somewhere you're going to probably do things in a manual fashion even if you're copying it uh, via the command line or an api call to your device right. uh, so you can get it up and running i mean that's how you're prototyping but you don't want to do that <laughs> going down the line oh I mean, no definitely you have to have like a, <laughs> an army of students or something sitting there going let's copy certificates to devices right. uh, so this automated way is a, a much more elegant solution we'll say so yeah i mean um and you've mentioned iam or identity and access management uh, which is the uh, the service on aws where uh, you can attach <coughs> policies which give you access to certain resources. Uh, so, for example, if you wanted to, in this case, with AWS Lambda, right. you're making sure that um, the call that comes through is actually uh, authorized to uh, talk to Lambda. Yeah. And in most cases, with security best practices or best practices in general, uh, you want to use something called the uh, least privileged uh, paradigm, where you only give users or uh, end users in this case access uh, that they need. Yes. So, you know, the minimum minimum access. So right. if they need to read from that DynamoDB table, you're only giving them read access, right? But the functions that uh, need to write to it would have write access. That's they wouldn't correct. have full. Yes. Because if you have full access, uh, you never know what can happen. I mean, you're, you're giving someone, uh, again, uh, full control of manipulating all the data in this case uh, with our example of DynamoDB. Right. Um, so that's, yeah, it's another thing to kind of note. And, um, you know, we talked about certificate rotation, uh, crypto chips. Um, and, you know, with the IoT platform, it says, you said that you, you chose it specifically. Um, if we kind of summarize a bit of that, is it um, you know, to do with scaling or device support? Was there anything that you want to mention to uh, people on the stream that you know, pops out of like, hey, we have to use AWS IoT uh, to accomplish our goal? Right, yeah, so I think um, the very key point is uh, during the initial phase of your pro uh, of your project, mm -hmm. uh, you want um, uh, as many as choice you have. So you can basically, based on your requirement, choose the um, the right solution you want to go with, yeah. right? So I think at that point, the AWS, uh, the device catalog is yeah. really play a very that, important that role right. in there. So it provides a very rich uh, device list which yeah. you can choose from there for your own uh, use case yeah. to solve your problem, right? Uh, that's one thing I really want to emphasize. Um, so just go there and uh, uh, think about your use case and choose the right solution from there. Yeah. It helps us a lot. Uh, and then, uh, because that, like I mentioned, that provides uh, uh, the out-of-box uh, working experience. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to worry about hey, do I need to uh, write a separate driver for this module and yeah. another driver for the other one? Out of the box, it just works. Because mm, it's qualified. It's qualified. That's why it's listed on the, the partner device catalog. And, you know, for those um, people who want to certify that will qualify the devices, you can go through the device tester, which is a, a provided by uh, AWS IoT, where um, you can uh, check whether your device can connect to the AWS IoT core uh, if you're running Amazon FreeRTOS or uh, AWS uh, IoT Greengrass, uh, which is another service we have, which is kind of like a smart uh, gateway if you think about it. Yes. Um, you can connect several IoT devices to your Greengrass core, and that can go up and make the connection to AWS IoT uh, so that if, um, say, you know, the connectivity is lost between the two, you still have the data being saved in the Greengrass core that's being sent between devices, potentially. Right. Uh, just another service in case you're wondering about that. Um, and, you know, you talked also about choosing that board. I think it's pretty important that, or, you know, from what you said, that you could just plug and play the devices. Yes. Or the peripherals, in this case, the Wi-Fi and the uh, UART. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that, that's, that again, you don't have to bother with wires. Uh, again, if that, you know, uh, if that's something you like, uh, you can do that too. There are some devices that are on there that you can um, put customized... Uh, breadboards together with. Um, and I think, you know what, uh, is there anything else that you kind of want to mention about this architecture or any of the services out there? Uh, oh, actually, you know, yeah, are actually, there any, yeah, are any we... questions in the chat? So we, we... Yeah, um, the Chunk Chumless uh, is asking, uh, my device must to have MQTT protocol or I can transfer other communication protocol like uh, Opqua, we have we have free archives. 
Ang ida pa sa yung tiko. Yeah. Well, I see one of our moderators has uh, pasted some of the links there, uh, saying that AWS IoT Greengrass supports that patro- the protocol you're looking for. Um, another way of doing this, yes, we support different ones like uh, Zigbee. Um, there are other protocols that um, if you're going to do a basic WebSocket call that you could do as well. Um, so you're not limited to use MQTT or HTTP. I think in, in this case, I was illustrating that uh, for alternatives between the two yeah. uh, of a high payload packet versus a lower payload packet. So yeah, you are, you are um, given plenty of options, we should say. Uh, any other uh, questions on there? Yeah, I think before um, we kind of head to the wrap up. I think on that note, I want to really highlight one thing is that uh, not just uh, uh, the protocol, mm-hmm. communication protocol, uh, the certificate also has uh, options. So AWS IoT Core provides a way uh, so you can use your own oh, yes, certificate. Oh, right? yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. So uh, instead of using the certificate generated by AWS IoT, you can use your own certificate yeah. to register your device. So that's another thing. So it's another factor that, about. that came into play when uh, Frank and his team were choosing a platform to go with. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's again, it's it's up to you, but we're here to kind of guide you of you know, how they went about it, and maybe you can uh, employ the same kind of solution or same kind of services in your architecture. And yeah, I mean, if there's any other questions, or oh, doesn't look like it. When we're yeah. just double checking so we don't miss anyone. I mean, want to we want to get to everyone on the stream and. At the same time, I mean, it looks like we might uh, we might have uh, covered all the ground we needed to cover. Yeah. So uh, based on that, I want yeah. to give you guys some like um, uh, output or uh, uh, result with oh, with okay. this project. Yeah. So basically, uh, we deploy those um, uh, matrix, device. I like it. You matrix it. exactly. So uh, to uh, hundreds and thousands of buildings yeah. already, uh, and it's already on the road. So the drivers from Amazon mm-hmm. is able to leverage this uh, 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 functionality, this feature mm-hmm. today. So if the building already on board with this one, then they are able to open their doors through their app. Ah, okay. So it's already deployed in production and, you know, numerous buildings, as Frank pointed out. And uh, I, mean, that's, I, I mean, that's cool because then again, your packages are not sitting in uh, outside the gate because someone couldn't get in. Right, uh, and you know your plans are to roll, keep rolling it out, right? Right. Hopefully, that can solve some of the customer issues. Hey, if, if, if I can make sure that my package gets into my apartment complex, I'd be happy because, uh, you know, I order a lot from the site called Amazon.com as well. Yeah. Um, I will say though, um, with your, um, with the, those of you out there who live in complexes or you know working in businesses that might benefit from this. Uh, the Amazon Key for Business site um, is up and running and you can uh, sign up or request, right? Yes. So okay. I think there, I believe there's a link uh, in our uh, Twitch channel. Mm-hmm. So you can open the Amazon Key for Business mm-hmm. link and then uh, sign up for this uh, product. Okay. And if, you know, if the link's not there, just go to the amazon.com website uh, search for Amazon Key for Business, and uh, you'll see the results pop up there. And you click on the one that says uh, Amazon Key for Business, actually. <laughs> but yes, I mean, Frank, you know what? It's it's been cool looking at the solution. Uh, I think it's it's like oh my my name tags run out of batteries. Uh, <laughs> need to recharge it. Um, but yeah, I mean, the uh, parting thoughts for our viewers at home and uh, everywhere else they might be watching from. Any parting, any other parting thoughts? No. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm really happy with this uh, uh, project, mm-hmm. uh, starting from the beginning and then to the end of the uh, deploy of those on the field. Uh, that's really, uh, really fun and a really uh, good experience with the AWS and IoT. Okay, just yeah. means your next device you're gonna get running uh, even quicker, right? I guess I bet so. <laughs> like you just you just snap your fingers, and that device is gonna be connected. Hopefully. So any any last questions on the chat? No, doesn't doesn't look like it. But uh, yeah, I mean, thank you for watching uh, IoT all the things. Once again, I'm Rudy Chetty, joined here today by Frank Lee. And you know what? We've got tons of episodes coming up in the year, so. Stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Yes, see you next time.